Hey guys, Christian from Shadow Saber Films back here again today with another tech review. But before we get into that, if you haven't yet, be sure to check out all of our social media sites as well as our very own website. All links will be provided down in the description. And if you haven't yet as well, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you can stay updated on all of our future uploads, including more like this, our budget tips and techniques, and our very own short films. And if you enjoy the video at any point, be sure to smash that like button as well. So today, let's get into a prosumer budget microphone that might just be the one for you. Also, one more little quick thing before we get into it. This video is not sponsored by anyone. I purchased everything included in this video on my own, and these are all my own personal opinions. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at the Rode NTG4 shotgun microphone. And just one real quick thing, this is the NTG4 and not the NTG4+. Plus. Just be aware of that, there are going to be some subtle differences, not very much to be noticed. But if you want to look at the MTG4, I recommend you go do that, because there might be some features in there you might like over this one, so be sure to check that out. It just wasn't right for me, so go take a look at it. Find it somewhere else. Unfortunately, I don't have one. So, so out of the box, uh, you get the microphone itself, you get a basic windscreen, a microphone clip to mount on a stand, and a road pouch to carry extra accessories. That's it. No XLR cable or adapter, and while this may seem like an inconvenience, it really isn't too bad as long as you notice that part before purchasing, uh, so that way you can choose what length of XLR cable you want and what type. So we'll get more into that later on, but I did order myself a six foot XLR cable and a one foot XLR cable, so that way I can plug it either straight into my camera or into my audio recorder like I have now. Got my Zoom H4n Pro. So the built-in features for this microphone include a bypass filter at 75 hertz, a high frequency boost, and a PAD at minus 10 dB uh, or minus 10 decibels. It is also a very durable uh, metal build to ensure long lasting quality and to make sure you get the best use out of this microphone. So obviously by looking at it, the Rode NTG4 is a directional condenser microphone or in other words, a shotgun mic. Uh, this means it uses a cardioid pattern and mainly records what is directly in front of it, but will also pick up to the sides a little bit as well, and the rear is basically unusable. So getting into the kind of bad aspects of this microphone, or the cons, uh, this microphone takes 48 volts of phantom power, which requires you to have an external source to use it, and while the Zoom H4n Pro that I'm using is a great device for that and does supply the correct power, it, uh, it really kills the batteries extremely quickly because it's just two double A's. So right now I've actually got it plugged into the wall just to make it work. But if you're out on the field, obviously that's going to be an issue and your batteries are usually going to die pretty quickly. So obviously there are solutions to this like getting a portable charger and the correct USB to uh, or USB cable for the device to plug into it to give it extra power and make it last longer. So this is an obvious convenience, but I will also get more or I will get to this more in the next section when we talk about the good parts of this microphone. And as I previously mentioned, when covering the items that come in the box, there was no XLR cable included, which once again, is a slight inconvenience. It becomes even more apparent why Rode did this when you go to order one, or when you go to order a cable from Amazon as like the top search when you type in XLR cable, pretty much the top one is going to be a Rode XLR cable, uh, at one or two different lengths, I believe. And that, that's pretty much gonna be like the first thing you see. So obviously it's a perfect cash grab, quick cash grab on Rhodes end. But like I said, with the previous point, I will be getting more into this in a minute when we get into the pros of this microphone. So I can show you why I'm not really surprised or upset that Rode did this. And aside from these couple of issues, I really have not had any problems with the Rode NTG4 as of right now. Alrighty, so getting into some of the good things about this microphone, while well, having the phantom power to operate it can be a severe inconvenience when it comes to actually keeping it powered, uh, as opposed to a battery powered microphone with a 3.5 millimeter cable, like my Rode VideoMic. Uh, phantom power actually does provide for a much cleaner signal through the XR, XLR cable, which gives you a much better end product for audio to work with, and just gives you much better quality in general. Uh, like here, I'll give a quick test in a different room with my Rode video mic compared to my NTG4. 
Alrighty, so just for comparison, here is the sound of the mic built into the C100 on the top handle. And now we'll go ahead and switch over to, this is the Rode video mic that I have. Uh, currently I've just got it hooked up with a 3.5 millimeter cable to my Zoom H4n Pro audio recorder. And to make things fair, I'm all I'm going to do is I'm going to swap this mic with the NTG4 at the same exact position into the same exact recorder. And that way you can see the difference there. So let's go ahead and swap. Okay, so then now here is the audio from the NTG4. Once again, plugged straight directly into the Zoom H4n Pro. And I've got it in roughly the same position I had the Rode video mic. I kept it pretty much the same distance, same angle. So that's kind of your reference right there for the difference between the two sounds. So you can tell that this is probably going to have a little bit better quality. It might be picking up a little more echo just because its pattern might be a little bit different. But I gave neither of them wind protection. None of the filters were on on either of them. This is just their pure raw audio. None of them were doctored or anything. This is just exactly how you're, you're hearing it exactly the way it's being recorded. And so that way you can see the difference. The Rode video mic, good for, once again, good for stuff like vlogging and on the go stuff. If you've got an actual studio or a real set, this thing is a beast and does do a lot for you. Back to the rest of the video. And like I said earlier, the fact that this microphone doesn't come with an XLR cable is kind of an annoyance and can actually hurt if you don't realize that when you buy the microphone. Uh, and it can also be beneficial to an extent. Yeah, you'll have to go shop for your own cable and have to find it on your own, but that way you'll also find the one that best suits your needs. Like I mentioned earlier, I bought myself a six foot and a one foot cable to cover pretty much everything I need. The six foot works great for booming it, throwing it in my audio recorder like I do right now. I've just got it on a mic stand over here. I've got my audio recorder down here so I can monitor all of that. Um, so I've got that all going and that would only work with the six foot cable if I use the one foot cable. That's great for if I throw the microphone on top of my C100 if I'm doing some really run and gun shooting. I can just mount it up there real quick, use the one foot cable to plug it directly into my C100 and we are good to go. So, and you can find some pretty good quality XLR microphones for cheap. Uh, I just went with Amazon Basic and it's been working really well and I haven't really had to worry about it. So like I said, I just, you have to know that before you invest in the microphone that it does not come with a cable of any sort. So make sure that you have your own on hand and that you have the right type of cable for whatever it is you're doing. You can buy XLR uh, adapters, XLR to uh, 3.5. So you can just plug the XLR into the microphone and then have a 3.5 cable coming out. You can plug into a phone, any regular audio or uh, smaller audio recorder like my Zoom H1, it would work with that. You know, just kind of knowing your needs and doing a little bit of research beforehand so you can make sure you have the right thing and you will be good to go. Like I mentioned in the first section when I was going over the specs of this microphone and I talked about the built-in features, uh, the pad, the high or high pass filter and the high frequency boost. These are all really useful tools that you can use to help you at any point during filming, uh, you know, depending on your situation. Say you're outside and there's a lot of extraneous noise and you're turning down your audio recorder as much as you can, turning on your preamp and it's still coming out really loud. You can throw that on and it'll just knock 10 decibels right off the top. It just records at a lower volume. So input going into the mic becomes lowered rather than you having to lower it in your preamp. Um, and the high frequency boost and the high pass filter, both really useful. It's kind of helped me tone down the echo in this room. Like this room is just tile flooring and while we've got carpets and furniture and everything down and all that, there's still some exposed tile and it's just, the sound is just kind of bouncing everywhere. So if I were to not have any of that on, I also do have my blimp and my dead wombat on it right now to help kind of dumb some of that down a little bit. But without those two or without those filters, it would really be hard to kind of get the cleaner sound that I'm getting right now. And I know it's still not perfect, but I'm just kind of doing the best I can with what I have. And so these two or these features have actually really helped me out a lot in terms of working with that and just trying to get the best quality that I really can. And the real nice thing about these features is that you can turn on just one of them, you can turn on two of them, or you can turn on all three at once. So you can really get it to fit your needs perfectly and well, I guess not really perfectly, but at least that much better and make your life that much better when it comes to working with audio because for a lot of people, audio can be a huge issue when it comes to film. And I don't really want that to be a problem for me. So having a microphone like this 
that can have all those features and just make life a lot easier when recording audio in tougher situations makes life so much better. Um, and just in general, this microphone, as you can tell, has an extremely good quality. I've got it a couple feet from me right now. I've got it pretty much arm's length, and it's still recording excellent audio given the condition that I'm in or the conditions that I'm in right now, my surroundings. And I have noticed it working really well in a lot of my films. It does great for recording you know, uh, special sound effects that you might need for whatever, building a Foley library, uh, or just recording general dialogue for a short film. It just does great. It narrows in on what you're looking at pretty good, but also can capture a wide area if you really need it to. It just depends on how you use it and how you place it. Uh, ideally, I would like to have the microphone a little bit closer than I do right now, but I really can't do that without it getting on the shot. So I just kind of got to work with what I got. And thankfully the NTG4 is reliable enough that I really don't have to worry about it being an issue. And it works really, really well. I have always loved Rode products. And like I said, I'm not sponsored by them. I just have really enjoyed the quality that I get out of their products. I've used this, I've used the Rode video mic. I've used the Rode video mic go when I was in media in high school. Um, my very first ever mic actually was my Audio Technica ATR 6550 or something like that, uh, that I have up here on the shelf. It had okay quality, but I knew that it wasn't going to last me forever. So then I upgraded to Rode, the Rode video mic, and it worked extremely well. I used it for vlogs. I started using it for short films over around or all around really solid mic. Um, but I think this has covered me a lot better, especially in terms of making short films. I'll still keep my Rode video mic for on the go type stuff, but this is really ideal, uh, for doing stuff like this or for short films where I can get total control and actually take time to set up everything and get it right whereas it's not just a run and gun situation and I don't need I don't need to just be able to flip a switch and get going because obviously the Rode video mic is so much easier to set up this does take a little bit longer because you got to plug in the XLR cable you got to make sure that all your right filters are on make sure it's plugged into your device it is kind of a hassle but it's really not an issue when it comes to getting good quality like this and it's definitely worth it so if you feel this is the microphone for you, definitely, uh, I would say go look into other microphones just to be safe. It never hurts. You can never do too much research on something. Sometimes it's better to kind of see different microphones that are out there, see things that might work better for you. Uh, for the budget, this actually, this just happened to work really perfect for me. So that's why I invested in it. I only invest in products I believe will actually help me in the end. So, you know, kind of keep that in mind as well. Be aware of your budget. Be aware of how much you're willing to spend. I think that's really all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, if you like the video, be sure to smash that like button and also hit subscribe and the bell notification so you can see future uploads like this, as well as budget tips and techniques videos for filmmaking and our very own short films. And once again, check out all our social media sites so you can stay updated whenever we upload a new video, a new short film. Uh, we'll also be doing more blog posts on our website for more stuff like this, budget film or budget tips and techniques, movie reviews. You can find all our stuff on there. There's going to be more details on there that might not be here. There'll be details on here that are not in there. So be sure to check out everything. Keep up to date with Shout Saber Films. And I'll see you guys all in the next video, whatever that is. Put them in the dirt. Say it again, man, and that's a reverse. Never rehearse. Jump in it first. Call up the nurse. Put the beat in the hearse.